Korea Festival 2016. Shanghai's K-Pop Academy. An animal shelter where occupants wait for new homes. A concert for budding musicians. Chef Lee Young-hoon's success story in Lyon. Hello, welcome to Going Global. I'm your host, Tong Se-mi. One major issue facing a number of countries around the world, including Korea, is low birth rates. Amid these worries, news of a 72-year-old woman in India giving birth to a healthy baby boy has made its rounds. Dalton Derek Haar gave birth after becoming pregnant through in vitro fertilization and gave birth in April this year. Her husband is 79 years old, and the couple has been married for 46 years, but they have been childless until very recently. Her baby son is reported to weigh 2 kilograms and is in good health. Carr's courage and determination not to give up is worthy of recognition. Now, let's turn to our first story of the day. The number of Indonesian tourists visiting Korea has increased by 20% annually, but this came to a stop last year due to the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome epidemic that hit Korea. Now, Korean expatriates living in Indonesia are working hard to attract Indonesians back to Korea. Let's take a closer look. This is a large-scale shopping mall located in downtown Jakarta, the capital of Indonesia. The mall was the venue for the 2016 Korea Festival, which drew in some 2,000 enthusiastic visitors. The Korea Festival first took place in 2012 as a means to promote Hallyu, or the Korean wave, and tourism in Korea. Ini sengaja kita bawa karena atau kita tampilkan untuk menarik minat masyarakat Indonesia sebagai calon wisatawan untuk bisa berkunjung ke Korea sekaligus mengenali kebudayaan Korea, terutama kebudayaan Hallyu. A Taekwondo demonstration by members of Indonesia's Taekwondo national team opened the festival. A K-pop cover dance competition followed. The competitors were selected after preliminaries held online, and audience members couldn't hide their excitement once the performance took off. Indonesia is a young country, with 61% of its population being under the age of 35. Subsequently, K-pop spread very quickly in this Islamic country. The number of Indonesian tourists visiting Korea increased to 208,000 in 2014 from 124,000 in 2011 but the number dropped last year due to the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome or MERS epidemic. Korean expatriates whose businesses were hit by the stagnant tourism industry hope to see a boost through a variety of Hallyu events. Indonesia the Korea Tourism Organization predicts that about 220,000 Indonesian tourists will visit Korea this year, restoring numbers to previous levels. Our next story takes us to China. Korean cultural centers located in 20 nations around the world will be opening K-pop Academy, a group of classes led by professional instructors who will teach students all about K-pop and Korean culture. In fact, the Korean Cultural Center in Shanghai, China, recently opened its K-pop Academy. Let's take a closer look. The K-pop class begins with a voice warm-up. The students are singing along to the theme song to the drama Descendants of the Sun, a mega-hit in not only Korea but also China. They may not have fluent pronunciation, but they know the exact meaning of the lyrics. The instructor also talks about K-pop artists currently popular in Korea and explains some of the Korean lyrics. Before 
，就是我们中国大陆特别出名、特别有名，然后我们很多中国像我这样的，呃，年龄的女粉丝特别喜欢他们，所以说，嗯、呃，我就很喜欢。Twenty students are enrolled in the K-pop class that takes place twice a week at the Korean Cultural Center in Shanghai, China. Students are selected by random draw one month before the class is open, and they face five to one odds. As part of putting together a systematic program, the class instructors are professionals who currently train K-pop singers in singing and dancing. Ah, 그곡을부른가수소개그리고가사내용그리고어려운발음들교정그리고음악적인표현기법들을가르치고또노래부르기전에발성법이나워밍업까지도교육과정에포함되어있습니다 The Ministry of Culture, Sports and Tourism plan to open these classes at 20 Korean cultural centers in 18 countries until September this year. Classes will also be offered in India, the U.S. and France, catering to local residents. 제대로 한류 문화를 좀더 체험하게 해주면서 젊은이들한테 올해가 마침 한국 방문해인데 이런 분들이 좀더 한국에 대한 관심을 많이 갖고 좀더 많은 한국 방문의 기회를 이어졌으면 하는 차원에서 하게 되었습니다. These classes are giving K-pop fans the opportunity to experience Hallyu firsthand. Moving on to our next story. In Korea, abandoned animals that are brought to shelters are euthanized if they aren't adopted in 10 days. However, one animal shelter in California is proactively reaching out to potential owners. And in one case, the shelter held an adoption event where potential owners could come and interact with the animals. Let's find out more. Two-year-old Cookie was abandoned in Santa Barbara, located west of Los Angeles, California, and spent time on the streets. Cookie was found three months ago in a dumpster and brought to this animal shelter, and is now waiting for a new owner here at a pet adoption event. Very dog friendly. They play in their little play groups and stuff like that. So we know she's good with other dogs. She seems pretty good with kids and pretty comfortable um, in this setting and in this environment. And with the event, we hope she gets a, her forever home today. Week after a long time on the streets, Cookie still vomits occasionally. Stephen, who has adopted two other dogs in the past, felt sorry for Cookie and decided to take her home. The first one I purchased and the other two I adopted. And the adoption went much better. I just kind of like it that you're not getting one from a puppy mill, you're getting one that's been abandoned and it needs a home. About 46,000 abandoned dogs were recorded in Los Angeles last year. Out of them, 35,000 have found new homes through animal shelters and the rest were euthanized. Euthanasia as a first course of action is forbidden by law and only those that are deemed unadoptable are put to sleep. Animal shelters do not set a time limit for taking care of animals, and this shelter holds events once every month or two to facilitate adoption. So every year we try to do an event either every month or every other month uh, just to keep people coming through the front door and remind folks of what great animals there are for adoption. About 500 people visited the shelter during the two-day adoption event. And during those two days, 200 dogs found new homes. Thanks to the efforts of one city council member, the city government began covering costs for anti-parasitic drugs, vaccinations, and pet registrations last year. As a result, potential pet owners can adopt a pet for a mere price of $17. Owners also get pet toys and a few days' worth of pet food. Love them and pay attention to them and take care of them because they're, and they'll love you back. These dogs have been abandoned by their old owners and are now waiting for their new homes. Looking after abandoned pets may be the first step toward a mature, responsible society.
Our next story takes us to Chicago. Korean musicians based in Chicago have been holding an annual fundraising concert for the past nine years in order to help disadvantaged music students come to the United States and study music. And this year, one university ensemble also took part and performed Korean music. Let's take a closer look. A tenor performs the Korean folk song, Longing for Kumgangsan Mountain. His pronunciation may not be precise, but the audience can sense the deep longing for one's hometown. This rendition of the Korean folk song Arirang by Korean and American musicians shows a harmony of tradition and modernity. These performances are all from the Ninth Scholarship Benefit Concert for Young Musicians. They're very expressional, you know, they, they're very expressive, should I say that? <laughs> no, it was fun, it was really great, I loved it. This concert first took place in 2008 as a way for Korean musicians in Chicago to perform Korean folk songs and classical music for Korean expatriates. All proceeds are used as scholarships for budding Korean musicians who face financial difficulties so that they can study in the U.S. Nine Korean students have benefited from this scholarship to date. 한국에서 어, 미국 유학을 꿈꾸는 학생들이 이곳에 많이 와서 많은 경험을 하고 어, 음악적으로 많이 조금 이렇게 넓어졌으면 하는 바람입니다. 어, 장학 사업이 비단 음악 전공자들뿐만 아니고 다른 전공자들에게도 확장되었으면 하는 바람이 있습니다. This year, a chamber ensemble from an American university performed free of charge. The ensemble sympathized with the concert's objective of helping disadvantaged students and practiced singing Korean music for three months. A lot of the vowel sounds and making sure that the consonants were correct, um, like an open versus a closed, like O. Oh. The concert was one of the best that I've ever had. I've. 한국 청중들이 충분히 수렴할 수 있는 곡들 그러면서 또 우리 학생들이 짧은 시간에 소화할 수 있는 게 무엇인가 그게 사실은 제일 어려운 거였죠. Organizers will continue holding this concert in the future to present quality music and help budding musicians. It's time for our last story of the day. A restaurant run by a Korean chef has received a coveted Michelin star for the first time. The Michelin star represents quality in accommodations and restaurants, and getting a Michelin star is said to be extremely difficult. However, this restaurant received a star just two years after it opened. Let's find out more. The city of Lyon is known as the capital of fine dining. It's home to numerous specialty restaurants and is a popular destination for epicures. This is La Passe Temps, Lyon's most trending restaurant right now. The name means pastime in English and the restaurant is run by Chef Yi Young Hun. The restaurant was honored with a star from Michelin Guide, the most recognized reference on dining out just two years after its opening. The restaurant's representative dish is foie gras. Lee's foie gras is made by roasting duck liver, adding seasonal vegetables, chives, and seaweed flakes, and finally pouring anchovy broth over it. Par rapport à d'autres restos étoilés français, moi j'ai trouvé que c'était très délicat, très fin et que effectivement on voyait une connotation asiatique dans la, dans, dans, dans la façon de faire les plats. When Lee failed to get into the university of his choice, he thought he'd lost his way, but he found his path by chance at a French restaurant in Seoul. Lee fell in love with French cuisine and studied at the Institut Paul Bocuse Culinary School in Lyon. He was extremely busy studying both cooking and French, but always managed to rank at the top of his class. Poser des des bonnes questions, très travailleur, très ponctuel. Euh, on retrouve un petit peu ça en fait dans la culture coréenne. Donc c'est un excellent coréen, un excellent cuisinier français. 
Following graduation, Lee wanted to open his restaurant in Lyon, but lacked the funds. Lee visited numerous banks to apply for a loan, but was rejected. 외국인 학생 신분에 있는 애가 레스토랑을 하겠다고 은행에 돈을 대출을 받으러 오는 자기네도 처음 받아보는 케이스인 그런 경우죠. 대출을 한 번도 해줘본 적이 없는. Eventually, he found one bank that would provide a loan for his monthly rent, but he didn't have enough funds for interior decoration. However, word spread about his food, and the Passe Temps is so popular now that a diner needs to reserve one month in advance. His tasty and delectable dishes in Lyon, the city of fine cuisine, may make the Michelin star he earned a given. I hope you enjoyed today's stories on Going Global. There are many unique records all over the world. For those of our viewers who enjoy exercising, you may have heard of planking, an exercise in which you maintain a position similar to a push-up for an extended period of time. Well, a new world record for the longest plank was established in China. Chinese policeman Mao Weidong maintained a plank for 8 hours, 1 minute and 1 second, setting a new Guinness World Record for the plank position. Mao claims that his previous personal record was about 4 hours, which goes to show the significant amount of effort he employed in achieving his new record. So how about looking for that one skill you're particularly good at and giving a shot at a new personal or world record? Going Global will be back next week with more exciting and interesting stories from all around the world. Thank you for watching.